ask me how do you feel, I'd say all washed out. And she said, you look it. And my father used to tell me, you look gray. <laughs> and, you know, it was a matter of being constantly sick. Uh, all of a sudden, I started feeling better and looking better. It took me probably three years of this before I decided that I had to be an evangelist. I was actually sitting on, on a toilet in the middle of the night <laughs> and thinking uh, <laughs> that uh, I really felt like I had been freed from prison. And I had started thinking about the millions of other diabetics out there who were still in prison. And I had a secret that none of them knew. So I decided I was going to try to spread the word around. And I joined all the, uh, well, there are only two diabetes associations. I was one of the first members of the, what was then the JDF, now the JDRF, Juvenile Diabetes Research uh, Foundation. Uh, I was at the first meeting, which was in, uh, a uh, church on Fifth Avenue near the Prince George Hotel. Uh, and in those days, I believed that a cure wasn't possible. I thought it was sort of a waste of time, but I joined anyway. And uh, I uh, ended up being on their research grant review committee for lay people. I was not a physician, remember. Uh, I uh, also managed to, with the help of a physician, one physician who was sympathetic to what I was doing, I got on the board of trustees in the New York chapter of the ADA, and uh, I ended up in a position to go to major meetings, meet researchers, meet doctors who were in a political position to do something. And I uh, typed up, or had typed up, a description of what I was doing. Real, really a very, very abbreviated version of my first book. Uh, it was, let's say, 30 pages long. And I handed it out to these doctors whom I met, got no support whatsoever from the clinical people, got uh, a lot of support from the researchers, the laboratory researchers, but they couldn't do anything about it. You know, they were laboratory people. They did not affect the policies of the uh, ADA and so on and so forth. Um, but I kept going to these meetings. I remember they used to, uh, a lot of these doctors at the meetings would go out at six o'clock in the morning and jog. In those days, that's when they wore silk shorts. Uh, and I had my khaki shorts, I was not a runner. Uh, and I'd go out for social reasons to join them, and what would inevitably happen was the guys would drop out a couple every few miles, I'd be the last one, I'd run another five miles and then run back. Now why was I able to do that even though uh, I was by this time older than most of them? I shouldn't say that, I was about equal to the average age. Um, I had been doing this cardiovascular exercise. So I had stamina that was tremendous. These guys had good muscles in their legs, but they didn't have the kind of stamina that I had. Anyway, I saw that I was getting no water. So I had uh, this article that I had written, typeset. In those days, you couldn't, we didn't have good photocopy machines. Uh, photocopies were crummy and they would fade. Uh, and it would take a long time to make them. So you yeah, had to have things typeset by hand, uh, by a printer. And then uh, we would uh, photo offset from a set type. And I printed up hundreds of copies. Uh, I sent it to journals. The article was ridiculed by all the journals I sent them to. Uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, I got uh, a letter back, actually, because I protested my rejection from the fa famous Franz Engelfinger, who was editor of the journal for 35 years. And he said, 
there's no evidence that uh, blood sugar control is of any value. Uh, and that was his comment. From the editor of uh, JAMA, where I had also protested the rejection, I got a letter, and Richard has these letters, uh, that said, in effect, uh, no one in his right mind would use an electrical device to tell him how to treat his diabetes. Uh, and uh, this is what I was running into. So uh, here I was getting no, nowhere with individual contacts, and I knew almost every um, president of the ADA from 1976 on. So, uh, and in the meanwhile, I started two studies, one at Rockefeller U University, to see if, re if normalizing blood sugars in type 1 diabetics could reverse complications. And we picked complications that I thought might be reversible, like platelet aggregability, um, retinopathy, and a few things. And um, indeed, uh, we did reverse the complications uh, that we studied. Um, also, when I had been talking to these ADA presidents about my method, they said, you're going to drive people crazy. Uh, people are not normally that compulsive. Uh, uh, you're certainly going to make them depressed. So I conscripted uh, a psychiatrist who was also a psychoanalyst who shared my wife's office suite. She was a, psychi a psychoanalyst and a psychiatrist, so they're both doctors. I, he was a uh, type 2 diabetic. I recruited him to test the patients uh, using the Hamilton depression scale mm -hmm. to see how depressed they were before and after. The group of 16 people on average was severely depressed. Their score was over 10. And after they learned how to control their blood sugars, uh, they went uh, under 6, which was normal. Uh, so we no actually normalized depression, we didn't make it worse. Um, I did another study in Brooklyn at Downstate, and uh, this time I actually got the idea, uh, thanks to my son, I had a little kid, I guess he was around 8 or 10 years old, we were at a diabetes conference in Israel, and he got, he, he went up to the bar for some uh, orange drink or something, and he got friendly with Julio Santiago, who was uh, a diabetic pediatrician uh, in uh, St. Louis. And uh, he introduced me to Julio, and I discovered that they were looking at leakage of the retinal vessels into the vitreous humor, and that they actually had equipment for testing that. I had wanted to do that. I knew that the Jocelyn Clinic had equipment, and I was in touch with someone up there who couldn't get the equipment to work. So instead of working with the fellow at Jocelyn, we worked with Julio. And we discovered that within six months, I'm sorry, within three months, we could totally reverse retinal le leakage in the group at Downstate. Uh, so here, we had accomplished all these kinds of things, and no one, still no one was interested. So I decided the only way I could get published would be uh, if I had an MD after my name. So at my medical school...